Milan starts in one of the highest developed areas of northern Italy in game. Your capital of Milan is also one of the most developed provinces at start and after a few events it becomes a province with the most development. Along with that you have two end nodes next to you Venice and Genoa which means you aren't really going to have economic problems at any point. Combine that with the monarch point generation of the Ambrosian Republic and you're looking at a world superpower from fairly early years. However, one of the problems of starting in an area surrounded by provinces with high development is that they generate a lot of aggressive expansion when conquered. An aggressive expansion is going to be your biggest hurdle for the first 100 years or so. I will divide this guide into phase 1, 2 and 3 with each phase subdivided into conquest and diplomacy and a separate Milan and at least specific game mechanic section in the end. I intended to write this guide for beginners, but really it's going to be for beginner to intermediate level players. The reason is that you can't have a set strategy for conquest and diplomacy when playing Milan. You will have to improvise a lot depending on alliances and rivalries around you. For opening moves, get level 1 advisors, improve relations or diplo rep guy, for diplo and a morale or discipline guy for military is preferable, rival Switzerland, Venice and Genoa, allies Savoy, Mantua, and one of either Papal State or Aragon. Or if they are not willing to ally yet, just keep improving relations. Also start improving relations with Austria and France. Make your ruler into a general and get a general from the states. Move your merchant from Genoa to Venice. Start building spy network on Switzerland and invest in becoming the paper controller whenever you can. The aim of phase 1 is to form Italy. In order to form Italy from Milan, you need these provinces. That means you will need to fight about 5 or 6 wars to take all the provinces. These are all high development provinces as well, which means you will accrue considerable aggressive expansion and might also have to fight a couple of punitive wars unless you plan on playing very passive, which you could do. If that's your style, you could attack your neighbor, grab a province and sit back till the AE is down below 10 for all neighboring nations, then go to war again and rinse and repeat. I usually don't have that kind of patience, but that's just me. So I'll show you how to form Italy in under 100 years, playing fairly casual. I will also leave a small note for beginners in relevant sections to make the gameplay easier. A beginner tip before we start the section on the Swiss war. This war is mostly optional. Switzerland will typically ally a couple of neighboring one province miners, so it won't be very hard. But if they ally anyone bigger, you really don't need to fight them right now. And you can skip to the next war. I like to attack them anyways. Once you get a claim, Attack Switzerland and call in Savoy with the promise of land. Try to stay near the Savoyan army and don't engage the enemy on your own. Once you get the war done, you can do one of two things. Either humiliate and peace out. This has the upside of no aggressive expansion and you get some power projection going as well. Second option is to grab at least these two provinces and give burn to Savoy. It forms a solid defensive fort in the mountains to protect you against punitive war enemies from the north. I really suggest going for the second option. That fort was the difference between me losing a punitive war and just bearing holding on. Now we rest and let the aggressive expansion die down just a little bit. Remember, aggressive expansion has a base decay of 2 and can be further decreased by improved relations modifier, which is why you should try to keep an improved relations guy as a diplo advisor whenever possible. If you skip the earlier war, attack Venice when truce expires using the reconquest CB. You take less aggressive expansion and Venice doesn't usually have a lot of nations in their trade league yet. Even if you wait till later, they will likely only have the knights along with Naxos and Corfu to fight for them. You might even get lucky if Ottomans attack them first. If they have a lot of other nations in the trade league, wait for your allies to have enough favors to call them in. Grab Brescia and Treviso and get out of the war. Hopefully Ambrosian Republic event will have kicked in by now. This is the only event that I would restart the game for while playing Milan. If you don't have the Ambrosian Republic event in the first 20 years or so, you're going to lag a bit. You're hoping your ruler dies in battle or siege and there are certain other conditions you could meet to fire it. We'll discuss it more in the game mechanics section. The next set of conquests will depend on diplomacy around you and your handling of web of alliances and rivalries in Europe. Let's start with some basic diplomacy tactics you can run. I call it Machiavellian Diplomacy. It seems fair since we are playing Milan into Italy. This section is more for beginners as intermediate level players will likely know all these tricks. If your enemy has a strong ally, wait for them to go to war and attack your enemy when their ally won't join in. If your ally is also allied to your enemy, declare war on another enemy and drag your ally there, then declare on the previous enemy. Consider temporary alliances with rivals of your enemies or someone who wants a province. You can decide to share the spoils of war depending on how long you aim to keep the alliance. The next trick is usually handy for papal state. They are typically allied to one or two major catholic nations and you need your allies to fight this war. However, 
your Catholic allies might have a minus 100 modifier saying accepting would destabilize the country. This means they have good relations with the Pope and are trying to ally them. You can get around to it by attacking a minor ally of a papal state and then co-belligerent them. This removes the earlier modifier and your ally will come to war if that was the only thing keeping them out. When piecing out enemies in war, keep in mind what your near future wars might be and see if you can break any alliances you don't want. And finally, never take provinces from a war ally who is in co-belligerent, at least in the start of the game. The extra 50% AE modifier means a certain coalition war. Using all these diplomacy tactics, you can conquer all provinces over time needed for forming Italy. In the war with Ferrara, Mantua will warn the province of Ferrara and will help you out in this war. You can take Modena and give Ferrara to Mantua for now. Florence usually fights Siena, and whichever way that war goes, you need to get Firenze and Siena to border Papal State. I also end up declaring a Genoa at some point, when they don't have too many nations coming up for their help. You will also find opportunity for this when they are attacked by either Crimea or Ottomans for their Crimean provinces. Once you get these provinces, move your merchant back to collecting from Genoa trade node. Time to get rich, or I should say richer. Now you can break your alliance with Mantua and declare on the day truce expires. If you are lucky, they will only have a minor ally and the war will be easy. If you are unlucky, they will have big allies, like my last playthrough, where somehow they managed to ally Austria, Spain and Russia. Either way, you need to take Mantua province before starting your next war against Papal State. The war against Papal State should be your last war to form Italy. Papal State is the most brutal war aggressive expansion wise, and there is a good chance a coalition will form against you. Papal State is also your biggest problem as they will excommunicate you as soon as you start conquering Italian provinces. If you are lucky, you or one of your allies will be the Curia control and you will be okay. But be prepared for excommunication at some point. Excommunication gives a malice of minus 50 opinion with every Catholic nation, which is compounded by your aggressive expansion, and you get minus 2 early prestige, which is pretty bad too. Along with that, other Catholic nations get a free CB against you. Papal State will also have at least one major Catholic nation fighting for them, if not two. Try one of the diplomacy tricks I mentioned earlier to either isolate them or bring in your strongest allies and take only Rome and Ancona in this war. Which brings us to another issue. Once you conquer Rome, you will get the occupation of Rome malice and negative deplorab. Then, when you refuse to return Rome to Pope while you're coring it, another negative opinion modifier with all the Catholic nations. However, as soon as you core Rome and form Italy, the occupation of Rome modifier goes away and the refusal to return Rome modifier will tick down eventually. Italy is the only Catholic country which can hold Rome without any malices. You can do a couple of other things to make this war easier. You can convert to Protestant or Reformed. This will make your life so much better. You can't be excommunicated if you're on Catholic, which means only minus 20 opinion modifier as, as neighboring heretics rather than minus 50. Also, no occupation of Rome or refusal to return Rome modifiers. And you get an extra missionary when you control Rome. Another one is that you can wait a few years for your aggressive expansion to tick down significantly, say below 10, with neighboring nations before declaring your war against Papal State. In my last playthrough, I decided to stay Catholic and tough it out, and tough it was. I got excommunicated around 1500 and got a couple of pretty bad punitive wars which I barely managed to repel. I still managed to form Italy in less than 100 years, so it's certainly doable, but it will be easier if you go Protestant or Reformed. Let's talk about your potential allies next. Savoy will help you out with Switzerland as they want their lands as well. Plus, they form a buffer, not a very strong one mind you, but a buffer nonetheless against French and Spanish aggression. You will abandon them as soon as you form Italy though because now you have course on them. You can also consider abandoning them if they are attacked by Provence and France. Not a good idea to fight France on your own early on. Which brings me to the next potential ally, France. Actually, I would rather not fight France at all till late game. Their armies are really overpowered and they are a natural rival to Spain who will likely integrate Naples and own lands in the Italian peninsula that you need to get back. You should make every effort to keep improving relations with France and ally them whenever possible. Next, let's look at your longtime ally Austria. I did a few runs as Milan and it seems 50% of the time Austria will rival you at start. Almost every time however they unrivaled me after a few years and later became allies. Just keep improving relations with them. It's nice to have that Austrian buffer since you're not going to expand that way anyways and they will help you out against Ottomans. You also need to ally one of Hungary, Bohemia or Poland, Lithuania depending on which of these nations are doing well. They will deter any coalitions forming against you and also help you against Ottomans. I would not advise to get vassal during phase 
phase one. In my playthrough, I managed to get Switzerland as a subject and help them expand into Burgundy a bit. They formed a decent buffer with two mountain forts, but it probably wasn't worth it considering the amount of AE it generated when I vassalized them. Just a quick note here, start making boats when you get the coastal provinces. I like going 60-40 split at the start between light ships and galleys. We'll discuss the navy in a bit. In phase two, we will unify Italy and neutralize Ottomans and Spain. Phase 1 really was the hardest part of this playthrough. Once you form Italy, the game becomes much easier with great Italian national ideas and the free course in the region of Italy. Phase 2 and 3 are about getting the provinces you need to form the Roman Empire, for which you need all provinces in France, Iberia, Italy, Balkans, Anatolia, Mashriq, and few other provinces here and there. Let's start with Italy and the Balkans. It's time to get your Italian course back. It's very likely Spain will inherit and integrate Naples, and you will have to fight Spain directly. This is actually the easier scenario. You can declare on Spain and call in France with promise of some land. France will take care of Iberia, and you don't need to worry about that. Just focus on sieging down all of Italian peninsula. Grab as much land as you can, and don't give France more than a couple of provinces. If Naples remains independent and allies France, you will need some luck and and some Machiavellian diplomacy to get those provinces. You also have reconquered CBs against Savoy, Genoa, Provence, Papal State, Venice, Mantua, and whoever else exists. Fight them one by one and it won't be that hard. You will fight a couple of more wars against Spain to get all your rightful land back. One of the key points here is to get the Belarus Islands or a province in mainland so you can get a foothold in Iberia. France should have enough favors by now and they shouldn't really ask for land when coming to war. In between these wars, get a claim on the Dalmatian coast and go to war against Ottomans. First couple of wars will be tough, but you will have at least two big allies helping you out, and your army quality will be far superior. All the Ottomans would have about 200k troops. Don't engage them full on, fight smart and grab only if don't expect to get 70 or 80% war score in the first couple of wars. Keep chipping them down bit by bit and try to make your way to Constantinople. Once you grab the capital, it is game over for Ottomans and you don't have to worry about them too much. In order to form the Roman Empire, you need two provinces from North Africa. Tunis and Fez. So you can do a surgical strike and just get those provinces. However, I like having this whole coast because it makes moving the armies around much easier and well it just looks right. Key here is to identify nations that you can release or vassalize as Berber provinces have 50% increased coring cost and you don't want to spend those extra admin points. The nations I like to release are Tunis or Tlemcen, whichever doesn't exist, along with Djerba and Algiers. I got lucky in my playthrough that I could release Tunis. They have a lot of cores here and the reconquest makes it much easier. Plan on having two or three vassals in this region at different times and don't give all provinces to one subject. You should aim to keep your French alliance at least for the majority of this phase, if not all. You don't want them to rival you and risk a war when you're busy with Ottomans. Keep Austria and one of Bohemia, Hungary or Poland, Lithuania as an ally too. I have already mentioned the subjects you need in North African region as well. Phase 2 ends when you have all of Italy and you have effectively neutralized Ottomans and Spain. Try to finish up this phase by around 1720. Ottomans are a weakling now and so is Spain. Portugal won't hold up to your forces either. Your main adversary in phase 3 is France. You will also have to fight Austria and Hungary, Bohemia or Poland, Lithuania if they'd hold any Balkan provinces, who are old Zealand and the Great Britain. Ottomans usually eat up all of Mamluks by this time or the Mamluks only have a few provinces left. In either case, try to vassalize them or release them as subjects. They have a lot of course in Mashriq region which makes it faster to conquer these lands. Once you get to level 23 Diplotech, start making client states to conquer provinces with more more than 100% over extension. One of the key things here is to try to trace out the boundary provinces you need to form the Roman Empire. A weakened Ottomans will attract a lot of enemies, so make sure you have secured the area that was rightfully your forefathers. Or you might need to fight a couple of extra wars to get the relevant provinces back from other nations. In between chewing up kebab, finish up Spain and Portugal. Remember the islands too. I forgot to take them and later had to travel all the way to Spain's new capital in Indonesia and Portugal's new capital in Eastern Africa to claim them. France will have some allies in the HRE but most likely Austria will be their rival and help you against them. The first couple of wars will be relatively tough and then it becomes easier. Remember to trace the border provinces you need here too and make client states when suitable. It will take a few wars to finish them up. Your priority should be getting the coastline provinces to the English Channel. To form the Roman Empire, you also need provinces of London and York because apparently your forefathers decided to venture that far out to conquer lands for Rome. This war comes down to the naval warfare. If you can land 200k troops in England, it's game over for them. 
Great Britain has the biggest and strongest navy and by late game it's actually really formidable. Luckily, you're drowning in money and monarch points because you are the Grand Republic of Italy. Here's also a good time to talk about navy. Like I mentioned, I start with 60-40 split on the light ships and galleys when you start making ships. After having about 30 light ships, I switch to full galleys production to counter Ottomans and anyone who dares to fight you in the Mediterranean Sea. You should also choose a ship boarding doctrine for free navy. Don't be afraid to go beyond your naval force limit too, as you will be able to afford it. As you finish off Ottomans, you should start swapping your galleys for heavies. I like having close to 200 heavy ships before engaging Great Britain. A bit overkill maybe, but you'll have the money. It also helps if you have quality ideas as you get extra naval bonuses, although it's not necessary. Here is my setup for English conquest. I like to have 100 transports in the English channel, flanked by stacks of 150 ships, mostly heavies with some lights on each side. Now declare war and start transporting your troops immediately. They will try to engage your navy, but have to get through one of the two stacks first. You should have enough time to shuffle 200k troops across. In my last playthrough, the AI Great Britain chickened out and decided not to engage the navy at all. Easy war from here on. Take provinces of London through York and piece them out. Next, grab Zealand. They are likely in the HRE and you will have to fight Austria here. It will be a piece of cake by this time. Blitzkrieg them and get the provinces you need. You can also grab any Balkan provinces you need and wean while you're at it. You might also need to fight another war if you're missing a province and two in the Balkans. A quick review for diplomacy in phase 3. Remember to not let your subjects have too much land. Keep integrating them and keep making new vassals for client states for faster conquest. You need 190 opinion to start annexing subjects, so keep improving relations with your client states as well. And that's all the conquest and diplomacy you will need to form Roman Empire, starting as Milan. In my last playthrough, I managed to form Roman Empire by 1778. I remained Catholic and a Republic for the whole game, and I didn't need to go revolutionary or fire the court and country disaster for more absolutism. Let's do a quick run through idea groups. I like opening with either influence or diplomatic. Influence is great for the reduced aggressive expansion and the extra diplo rep. It will also help with integrating vassals late game. In my last playthrough, I opened with diplomatic and the extra improved relations along with diplo rep helps a lot with aggressive expansion as well. Also, the extra diplomat is helpful in improving relations with more nations. Plutocratic is a must-have as a republic. Each one of its idea is tailor-made for you. Next is administrative. You'll be using mercs from pretty early on as you can afford them, and reduced merc cost helps even more. And of course, core cost reduction is always nice to have. Next is humanist. The religious unity with extra tolerance and negative unrest is a must since you'll be conquering a lot of Sunni provinces. You need quantity next. You have a fantastic army and you can afford a lot of mercs, but you will be rather low on manpower. Getting quantity helps with that, and the extra land force limit modifier is not bad either. After this you can go quality, but it won't matter because you've already won the game. The Ambrosian Republic event turns your monarchy into a republic. It will fire if you have a regency or if your legitimacy is below 75. Like I mentioned earlier, it's great to have this fire early on. You can force it by abdicating your ruler or losing legitimacy by accepting demands from noble rebels. Once you have it, you can select one of 411, 141 or 114 ruler depending on which monarch points you need the most at that time. Elections are every 5 years and re-electing the same ruler will increase their stats by plus 1 in all categories. At the cost of 10 Republican tradition. Republican tradition is like legitimacy. You gain one base Republican tradition every year, further modified by power projection. So you will get at least five tradition back every election, which leaves five more tradition of the 10 you need to re-elect. You can get that extra five either by events, which give you more tradition, or by strengthening government using military points. I always re-elect as having a 666 ruler is amazing for monarch point generation. Some people like to switch back to monarchies once they have formed Italy for a couple of reasons. One is to get more absolutism for faster conquest as Ambrosian Republic has a minus 30 maximum cap for absolutism and second is to get possibility of PUs, again for faster expansion. You can switch back to monarchy if your Republican tradition goes below 40 by events. In my opinion, it's great to be a Republic because 1. You will be drowning in monarch points, which is a rare feeling in EU4 and 2. Almost every other game you play will be as a monarchy and playing as Republic Republic is experiencing a different game mechanic which is fun. And as you can see from my playthrough, it's not that hard to form the Roman Empire as an Ambrosian Republic. The Shadow Kingdom event will let you choose to either stay in the HRE or not. I always choose to get out of it, but you can stay in if you plan on becoming the Emperor and playing the HRE game. I also like taking part in the religious wars playing as Italy, as usually I have time around then, when I'm waiting and not fighting anyone because of either AE or manpower, you get an extra age objective fulfilled 
along with some army tradition and military tech cost discount. Obviously, you don't have to do it, it's just a fun little mechanic I enjoy when playing in Europe. If you stay as an Ambrosian Republic, you will get a lot of monarch points. Use the extra diplo points to increase your mercantilism, you can increase it up to 100 and you get trade and embargo bonuses. Use the military points to strengthen government whenever possible and use the advent points and any other extra monarch points for development. Playing as Italy, not only do you get a lot of monarch points because of being a Republic, you're also insanely rich and can afford level 4 or 5 advisors which means even more monarch points generation. Keep in mind the higher level advisors are really really expensive. I had a max absolutism of 55 in my last playthrough and it was enough for me. You can do the absolutism tricks to get more absolutism. I won't cover it here as there are a lot of good guides on it but I don't think it's necessary for this playthrough unless you're going for a world conquest. In the age of revolutions you can also go revolutionary by firing a disaster. This gives you a lot of bonuses and will definitely help in conquests. This is certainly for players who have a bit more experience in the game. I won't go into it in this guide either as there are a lot of good tutorials out there. If you think it's too much work to fire a disaster and deal with rebels to go revolutionary, you can just be a plain old Ambrosian Republic and still kick ass. I want to mention here, my aim with these guides is to help newer players become more flexible while still working towards an end goal in game. Your game will be different from mine. You might not have a Spain at all, or maybe Ottomans or England collapsed early. But with this guide, you should be able to navigate most conquest and diplomatic problems. I really hope this will help out both beginners and intermediate level players who are looking to try their hand at Milan. Thanks for watching and Arrivederci!